Can you hear me, Roland? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, fine. So, since we are German based, uh, German based people, Franz Peter and myself, we are starting on time punctually. Uh, I think there might be more investors to come because we had like roughly 20 people registering. Let's see. Um, okay. We have the pleasure, I have the pleasure here today, um, myself being Ronald, the regional manager for Dachet Seedling, to speak with Franz Peter, who is the founder and CEO of Lindis Blood Care. Currently uh, raising uh, on Seedlink, obviously, uh, as a VC backed deal, uh, backed by two prominent German funds. We'll talk about that one later. And the intention of this call is obviously to get to know Franz Peter and Lindis a bit better, uh, to understand where they are coming from, uh, and also to allow uh, our investors, you people, uh, ask questions. And the I want to kick it off by asking you uh, the, the standard question, I, I would argue in the meantime, that is the so-called garage story. So tell us, tell us how, how, how did you come about? How did you come about founding uh, Lindis Blood Care? What was the idea behind it? Uh, how, how, how did this whole thing start? Okay. Thanks, uh, Roland. Um, the idea is, so first I have to excuse myself. <clears throat> I have a cold and maybe my, my voice is sometimes uh, uh, leaving me for a while. <clears throat> so... Um, I met Horst Lindhofer, who develops uh, uh, by specific tree functional antibodies years ago. And I met also Kai Zachowski, who is uh, one of the best histologists uh, in, in Europe and, and most famous for, for patient blood management. And we look for a solution to get the blood, which is uh, sucked from a, from a surgery round, Back to the patient as it's as it's standard in uh, let's say most of the of the huge operations done today, um, and there is no way to do it right now because um, this blood is is uh, uh, contaminated by tumor cells, thousands, up, up to millions of tumor cells, and you can't give this blood back. And so, since donor blood, which is given instead, um, uh, um, is uh, combined with a lot of severe side effects. And up to death, um, we look for a solution, and we have managed to de to, to develop a device which is now in the approval stage in, in the EU and US um, um, to get rid of all the tumor cells from this blood and, and take the patient's blood and give it back to him without any side effects, uh, without bringing the immune system down as Donald Trump is doing it always. So I guess it's a, a huge huge step in in, in uh, uh, cancer surgery and blood management and cancer surgery. Great. You talked about certifications, uh, uh, registrations with obviously the European and the US bodies. Can you give us an update where you stand uh, on, on those certification processes? It might be interesting because that's obviously yeah. the next vantage point of inflection point, so to say. Right. So uh, in, in the EU, it's a C certificate for a make a product um, uh, class 2B. And we had just today um, a Q and A session with the with the notified body, and we are on a, on a fair way to to get the to get the approval this year and before end of the year. And in the US, we have um, submitted uh, all uh, documents on September eighteenth, and uh, uh, we guess that the approval will be done in Q three next year. Brilliant. So. This is clear what we are doing. We are going for for market our product uh, first in Europe and then uh, for by US, and uh, we are also looking for parts in China. Brilliant. Um, I mean, the solution. I, I, I'm obviously a bit biased because I have a biotech background as well. So obviously, my <laughs> my heart beats a bit louder when I first came across Lindis. Um, the solution in a nutshell is is kind of interesting because to put it, it, it's very easy to explain. I mean, what you guys are doing is you have a procedure, a product that allows to literally filter out cancerous cells from patients' blood. Full stop. This is basically what you guys are doing. And that, no therefore, and that therefore allows basically to put this same blood back to a case of cancer patient during surgery. It's brilliant. Now let's get a bit uh, towards the technology behind this. How, how does that actually work? Without going into the nits and balls and without assuming everybody has a PhD in molecular biology, just like holistically speaking, if we were to uh, explain it to our grandmas, how, how would you explain it to them? I, I would I would um, help all of us uh, by by showing um, one one slide if, if if possible. Absolutely, please. 
Great, thank you. So, can I see it now? Yes. Great. So, this is a process how the blood is sucked from the patient's bone to the to the reservoir in this IBS device. The IBS device is, is typically in, typically available in almost all hospitals and is used to, to, to clear the blood and give it back to the patients. And this is a standard process. And the only thing what we are doing is to give an antibody, a biospecific antibody into this blood. That's it. And the final filter here is, is, is exchanged from a 12 micrometer filters to a LBC, to, to LDF. That's nothing which is important. What are we doing? We have an antibody, which is linking um, tumor cells and immune cells together. So what you're getting are aggregates, and these aggregates are, are filled out by, by two steps. First of all, in this IBS device, is a centrifugation step, and we are losing more than 80% of these complexes because they are much bigger than the other ones uh, in this centrifugation step, and just the rest is filled out by this LDF at the end of the process. And you can see it, how it works, what you see here is in yellow, the or in green, the, the uh, tumor cells, in blue, uh, the immune cells, and what's red in between is the antibody. So it's just forms of complexes, much bigger than the than the single cells, and then you get rid of them by centrifugation and, and filtration. It's if you see it this way, it's easy to get to this antibody, it's more difficult. And this antibody is highly selective towards tumor cells, makes them accumulate, allows them to basically be filtered out uh, if taken, uh, if being part of this filter that you explained. Okay. Right. Makes sense. This antibody is binding on the one side to, to APCAM. It's a very general cancer uh, marker, which is, uh, you can see, is, is over all these cancers. And um, the other, the, on the other hand side, the antibody is, is binding uh, by a, a marker called CD3 to immune cells. And there's also another part of this of the antibody binding to other immune cells. And this give, gives a, a three-dimensional uh, clot uh, aggregate, finally, which could be filled out. This is the biggest one that we have ever found in, this, in such a filter on the left side. Awesome. When we're talking about uh, sort of competitive, when we're talking about competition, I mean, uh, this is an interesting one because as far as I understand, there is literally no real competitor out in the market doing similar things as you do. I mean, the main competitive technology, so-called, is, is, is blood donation, right? At the end of the day. Where, 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 do, you see, where do you see your competition, like technology-wise or sort of uh, company-wise? Yeah. So company-wise, none. <laughs> but um, there is one process where the blood is um, is is uh, radioactive radiated, which is quite complex due to the to the regulations of this process. It means that the anesthesiologist has to take the blood by himself, go to the radiation, wait for radiation of the blood, and take the blood back to to the to the operation room. It's not possible because the anesthesiologist can't, can't leave the room within the operation. So as far as I know, there are just in, in, in overall Germany, five hospitals who could manage that. And one of them called me right now because they are not longer able to do so and ask for upright. So this is what you can do. The and, and there's there's coming one 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 thing beside yeah, with this radiation, the cytostatin of the of the erythrocytes um, are going down and are damaged. And so they cannot longer, longer easily pass the small, these the quite small capillaries. Um, so the standard uh, procedure today is to give donor blood with all these um, severe side effects, and there will come up a list with all these side effects and, and with a number of side effects very soon um, managed by by Professor Tarowski and the patient blood management group, and this is severe, I guess. So and company wise, there's nothing. There was a trial to get rid of the tumor cells only by a filter, but tumor cells have just the same size like blood cells. Um, and so you can reduce the number of tumor cells, but never go down to, to near zero as we can do. And so there's always the, the problem that there's a risk to, to spread the cancer over the body uh, by, by, these, by these tumor cells. And the risk is there because we're talking about APCAM positive tumor cells. And APCAM is a one marker of tumor stem cells. And these are the cells which are really able to, to found uh, new cancers in your body. 
So uh, it's a huge risk. And and um, a water trial to use it, nearly no one is doing it, especially in the US. No one is doing it because, because I talked to some of the physicians. They said, if I use it and the cancer comes back, no matter why it comes back, I will be sued. <laughs> I can imagine that. Talking about, uh, we touched upon the technology. Um, where's the market? Where do you see the primary market? And uh, once once certified, and uh, we all hope that this is going to happen sooner than later uh, in the EU and in the US, once certified uh, and registered with the authorities, in which markets do you want to make money and how do you want to make money? So first of all, I would like to talk about indications. So we are... We're going for all solid, nearly all solid tumors, which are a lot, quite a lot, 14 of them, um, uh, and and with a potential of 800 to 900,000 patients per year who could benefit uh, from our uh, kit. This means there are roughly 12 to 13 million of apcan positive tumors every year. Half of them will be, will be going for surgery, and just 8, 9, 10% of them uh, twelve percent need needs needs blood transfusion during during the operation. So that's the, the reason why we are talking about eight hundred nine thousand people who could benefit from from our kit. So on the other hand side, there are the patients who had have had already cancer, and who never knows if there are some encapsulated micro tumors in the body, and so they will use our kit for, in a prophylactic way in any surgery. Because you never know if 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 the physician is cutting a, uh, through a micro tumor somewhere somewhere in your body, your body, um, and and so um, you don't know um, uh, if there are tumor cells which will be spread through your body. This is if you just talk uh, if, if you just are talking about two or three percent of patients who would use it. Another one to one point five million patients who hopefully will use our kit. So. There are, the, there are the population of more than 2 million patients per year uh, which could use our, our kit, but we are only, only calculating with around 200,000 per year. Um, yes, we have no competition, but there will be regions in the world where the kit wouldn't be used because there's not enough money for that. So we expect finally to have peak sales of, uh, of roughly 200,000 uh, um, units in the world. In regards to the regions, we are talking about first uh, Europe, second the US, third China and Japan, and rest of the world. So we were we were asked on the last on the last um, exhibition by a clinic of, coming from Saudi Arabia if you could deliver it to them. Yes, I would do that for sure. Understood. Great. Thanks for that. Um, you already have uh, prominent co-investors on board. Uh, existing investors, uh, especially in uh, the German-speaking part of Europe, or in Germany to be precise, uh, Hightech Gründerfonds, one of the biggest funds uh, that exists in Germany, I would argue, is backing you. For the ones of you who don't know Hightech Gründerfonds, it's, it's one of the longest lasting or oldest, I should say, um, venture funds in, in Germany with 2 billion assets under management and close to 200 exits and IPOs. And then, obviously, given your location as Lindis Blattke uh, in the, the beautiful Brandenburg area, you are also backed by Brandenburg Capital. Also, right. uh, a third, thirty-year uh, experience VC invest in Germany with, I think, around two hundred fifty million assets under management and roughly two hundred portfolio companies. So this is all good and well. And you yourself, I should add, uh, have your own exit experience with uh, Glycotope that you sold successfully together with. Uh, with your uh, other XX in 2017. So that's all good and well, i.e. that begs the question, where do you see Lindis Blood here? Where do you want to go with it? Do you see an exit on the horizon or what's what's your personal what's your personal goal with, with Lindis? So we are already in, in first talks with, with a company who would like to acquire us or with, with two companies who would potentially be able and, and would like to acquire us. So um, as we know in MedTech, you, you you never will be acquired before you are in the market. So we have just these few months until we are in the market. And, and then let's say three, four or five months later, we can really talk about an exit. So my backup plan is to uh, generate an exit before we are going in, in, in the direction of break-even, meaning I would, I would prepare the company 
uh, in Q4 um, 2025 latest for an exit in, in the first half of 26. If not, one of the both companies we're talking to would buy us before. But these are obviously the critical value inflection points, which would then translate into higher multiples and so on and so forth. Right. This is understandable. Yeah, we are looking. We are looking for break even in uh, end of twenty six, early twenty seven. So, uh, um, and I would I definitely uh, uh, like to, would like to to sell the company before. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, but calculation, all calculation we have done because we have quite low cost of goods, uh, roughly twelve um, percent of of the of the same price. So the the um, um, margin is, is quite high, and and we will end up with an EBIT of of thirty percent roughly. So I guess it's a nice investment also for a company would who would like to acquire us. Um, looking from looking at Lindus from an investor's viewpoint, as our investors will obviously do. Give us a couple of few aspects why you think this is a brilliant investment opportunity to invest into Lindus right now, not later. When it gets too expensive, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we don't know. We don't know if, if there is later. I, I have, I have, I'm preparing for a set holding if, if, uh, if we won't come for a, a deal with with all these two companies. But I don't know if there is any later for us. So um, we are quite far advanced in the, in the process. We are in the approval process. We have done all the development uh, um, um, stages. We have fantastic data. In the last in the last uh, clinical trial, we had sixty one patients with tumor cells uh, in the blood, up to four point three million. Fifty nine times we came down to zero, and zero is a number which which usually in in biology is is not existing. One patient had just four cells left, and one patient with physician did a huge mistake, had only one cells left coming from seven hundred thirty thousand. So it's a very safe and, and very good uh, um, 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 product. We are the only company in the world which will have finally an approved uh, medical device in this area. Um, and I guess it's it's also something which will help the patients, especially cancer patients, um, to survive this 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 uh, um, um, yeah malignant uh, um, tumor. So I guess these are good reasons. So it's a company which where, the, where most of the risk, beside the market risk, are gone already. We have a minimum risk of of not getting approval. We have we've had a, a very nice talk today to the to notified body with a very nice results for us, and they they especially said that that our documents are very very good. So I guess there's no risk in the US, in, in the EU. Yes, you never know, but uh, FDA said they are keen to get our product to the market and yes hopefully it it will be that way um and so i risk a minimum and the benefit for patients but also for investors is quite high because we are looking now for capital on a on a on a uh, pre-market valuation of 21 million and i get i guess if i if i sell it soon i will get i expect minimum threefold of this of the amount and if I if I would sell it uh, a little bit later in twenty six, I guess it should be five for this amount. That's good prospects. And you said to linger on that point. You said there is a chance and the likelihood that this is going to be the last financing round before this company goes on the exit route. And there is already first discussion. You know, I just you know, never say never, but I, I think <laughs> we have a good chance. We have a good chance to to, to get in this way. I understand. And you, you you obviously you're not doing this for the first time, so you know what you're talking about. And you're <laughs> you're not you're not no offense, but you're not the 25 year old founder, but an experienced founder who has seen a lot in his life and who has executed a lot. So uh I, I guess I guess we can rely on your on, on your reasonable planning. I, um I, I sold I sold my third comp my first company in two thousand eight. Um I sold the Heidelberg part of Dakotope in twenty seventeen. And we have a license deal with Daiichi with Dakotope as well. It's it's uh, public, so it's not nothing. I would why would I um, is under what what's under CDA? So I didn't do it for the first time, and perhaps only also not for the last time. And uh, this is actually among the first discussions that we ever had, which surprised me because you were already 
besides talking about Lindis and being being all into it, you're already talking about your next venture <laughs> that you're gonna start <laughs> after Lindis. And I thought this is kind of interesting. This doesn't happen too often to me, but this gentleman seems to know what he's talking about. So, uh, I guess I would have some trust in you here. Um, is there any questions from the audience? Uh, since we're having a bit of a dialogue me, here, yeah, please. Let me let me one thing. Yes, you you you're talking about my my uh, um, yeah my intention here for this company and my, my work for the company. I also have uh, invested nearly half a million euros for my own money into this company, just to give you a sign how I think about it. Yeah, that's a very strong commitment that doesn't happen too often these days that the founders are uh, investing quite a substantial amount of their personal money into, in, into the round. So that's, that, that's obviously appreciated. Thanks for adding that. Is there any questions from the audience? You can write it in the chat or you can uh, basically unmute yourself however you want to play it. If there is any. If not, I will continue one. And I'll, this is a bit of a personal one. So feel free um, to answer as you see fit. Um, what would you think is the, the best investment that you have made apart from your startup investments, from your company investments? Like, I don't know, certain book you have read, certain person you have met, certain question you might have answered, you might have asked a certain person. So what, this is a bit of a personal one. So feel free to do, uh, to do, uh, to do free, free, free answer as well. It's easy to answer. So the best person I met was my wife. Very romantic answer. <laughs> no, no, it's, no it's, 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 it's true. I, my, I met her, I met her in, in my time when I worked for a management consulting company. She did it well. And, uh, it's always good to have someone uh, behind you who can back you and understand what you're doing. And and if 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 you don't have eight hours a day to work, a little bit more, sometimes uh, sometimes seven days a week, it's always helpful to have someone who understands that. The beautiful answer. Appreciate that. Um, towards the deal terms, um, the round. For Lindis is currently open on Seedlink, but this is going to be the last week. We are having a deadline uh, for closing by Sunday, coming Sunday, the 6th of October. So for any investors that are still interested to invest in Lindis at what we consider still a reasonable valuation, as outlined also by Franz Peter, then please, this is the week to do so. Uh, we will send uh, an email to all registered participants of this call uh, as a follow-up to this call. And uh, there will be a last call email in the course of this week, again, highlighting the deadline of coming Sunday. And with that said, um, so thank you, Franz Peter, for your time. Your voice sounded better than this morning, so I take it as a good sign. <laughs> and um, personally, uh, get, get well soon, get some rest, because you are not fully up and running, understand. And for the investors, thank you very much indeed for participating and taking the time. And with that being said, have a good one and take care, everybody. Well, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.